Well, welcome everyone to the vineyard. Glad to see you all out this evening or this morning. Whew. Is it evening yet? Uh, for those that are visiting, my name is Brad. I get to serve as the lead pastor here at the vineyard. So glad to have you on this Easter morning. Uh, I'm just really pleased that you've chosen to spend Easter in celebration here. Um, and I know that probably if, if you regularly attend the vineyard, you're probably like wondering what happened to the seven minute break because you wish you had filled up on coffee, um, which we typically do here as, as a seven minute break, more for connection and coffee and, and taking the kids to, to their classes. Um, but I know that most of you are also probably really disappointed that you missed out on the um, opportunity to connect with someone today. So we're gonna take just a moment now and do that. And so before we start, uh, there's a couple rules to follow in connecting. And the first one is smile. So everyone put on a smile, right? And then repeat after me, good morning. Good morning. Okay, perfect, you guys are ready. So what I'm gonna ask you to do over the next moment, stand up. Stand up right now, put on your smile, and just say good morning to the people around you. Good morning. Excellent job, everybody. When you're ready, you can have a seat. That is amazing. It is a good morning indeed. Uh, before we move into today's message, let's just take a moment and, and prepare our hearts in prayer. So Father God, I uh, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity for us to come and to celebrate the resurrection of your son, Jesus. I thank you, God, that... Uh, you, sent, you sent him for us, Lord, because of your, your great love. Lord, and I thank you that the cross wasn't the end of the story, but the empty tomb um, is. And it's the, tomb, the empty tomb that gives us hope in the midst of the struggles and trials that we face in this world. So we pray, Lord, as we hear your word over the next few moments, would you speak to us, Holy Spirit? Would you prepare our hearts? Would you strengthen our faith? Would you help us to rely on the hope that comes with that empty tomb? In your name we pray, amen. All right, well, this morning's message is entitled Built on the Rock. And to get us started, I thought since the kids got a, a story, uh, that we adults should have a story too. And so I'm going to take a moment and read a very familiar tale to you. It's called The Three Little Pigs. Okay, anyone remember The Three Little Pigs? All right. So the story goes like this Once upon a time, there were three little pigs who lived in a cozy cottage on the hill. They loved to eat all the delicious food their mother made them every day. They ate so much that it wasn't long before the three little pigs had grown so big that there was no room for them in the cozy cottage anymore. I'm sorry, said their mother one day, but it's time you made your own way in the world. So the very next day, the three little pigs left home. Don't forget to watch out for the big bad wolf, called their mother as she waved goodbye. He'll eat you for supper, so you'll need to build a big, fine, strong house as quickly as you can to keep away. Don't worry, Ma, they oinked. We can look after ourselves. And the three little pigs trotted off down the hill, each taking a different path. It wasn't long before the first little pig met a farmer pulling a cart filled with straw. Please, may I buy some straw to build a house, asked the little pig. Of course, replied the farmer, but a straw house won't be very strong. 
But the little pig didn't listen. Soon he was busy stacking the bundles of straw for his new house. In no time at all, the house of straw was finished and the little pig went inside for a nap. He had just shut his eyes when there was a knock at the door. It was the big bad wolf and he was hungry. Little pig, little pig, let me in, growled the wolf. No, cried the little pig. Perfect. <laughs> then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, laughed the wolf. And that's just what he did. Meanwhile, the second pig was walking along the road when he saw a woodcutter piling up sticks. Please, may I buy some sticks, he asked politely. I want to build a house. Of course, answered the woodcutter, but a house made of sticks will soon fall down. But the second little pig wasn't listening. He was much too busy planning his new stick home. Soon the house was finished. The little pig had just sat down to rest when there was a knock at the door. It was the big bad wolf. He was even hungrier now. Little pig, little pig, let me in, he growled. No way! <laughs> cried the second little pig. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, cried the wolf. And that's exactly what he did. Meanwhile, the third little pig had met a builder. Please, may I buy some of your bricks to build my house, he asked. Of course, replied the builder. A fine, strong house of brick will last forever. The third little pig took the builder's advice. He would build the strongest house in the land. Finally, after a hard day's work, the house was finished. It had four strong walls of brick, a tiled roof, a sturdy wooden door, and a large fireplace with a chimney. The third little pig had just put on a pot of turnips on the fire to boil when he saw his brothers running down the road, closely followed by the big bad wolf. Quick, cried the third little pig, hide in here. The wolf, who was very hungry by now, banged on the sturdy front door. Little pigs, little pigs, let me in, he growled, his tum tummy rumbling very loudly with hunger. No way, <laughs> cried the three little pigs. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, laughed the wolf. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed but the brick house stood firm. The wolf was furious. He climbed up onto the roof and shouted down the chimney. If I can't blow your house down, I'll come down the chimney and gobble you all up. The big bad wolf jumped and landed with a huge splash in the pot of turnips boiling on the fire below. He leaped up with a scream and ran out of the house, never to be seen again. And the three little pigs lived happily ever after in the house made of bricks. After reading this story several times this week, I was not only taken back to my childhood, <laughs> but I identified a lot of solid lessons that we can learn from the story of the three little pigs. But the one today that we're gonna focus on is what you build your life with, on, and around matters. The theories, the philosophies, the teachings, the habits and priorities that you employ to live your life do matter. In this story, the first little pig made a choice to build his house of straw, even with the warning from the farmer that the straw house wouldn't hold up. And though he got his house built quickly, it didn't take too long for the big bad wolf to blow it down. Straw houses are frail and weak, and they don't stand up against the storms of life. Yet, far too often in this world, we entrust our lives to straw houses. For example, we live in a world that is driven by social media, and I am not like opposed to social media. But when we model our life and our identity on the latest social media trend, we are building our life 
on a straw house. Because before the day is over, a new trend has started and you just have to keep building. Financial security, material possessions, career status, social influencers, news and media, celebrities, they're all just temporary influences that lack the strength needed for us to stand up in this world. And when you think you're safe, in building your life around those things, when you think you're secure, the big bad world comes knocking at the door, blows that sense of security you've built, and you are left running for cover, just like that third little pig. The second little pig, he made a choice too, to build his house out of sticks. And he too was warned that a stick house wasn't, wasn't sturdy. But he was too busy planning his house to listen. And just as he sat down to rest from all his building, he too gets a visit from the wolf who is easily able to blow his house down. Stick houses, though stronger than straw, don't hold up against the pressure of this world. And yet again, we often build our lives on those foundations of sticks. Government, the economy, healthcare, family, relationships, they're all great. But when we put our faith in those things and build our lives solely around them, it's like building a house of sticks. Under the pressure, they crack and fracture and collapse letting you down and running for cover. Then we have the third little pig. I'm going to read about that third little pig again. Meanwhile, the third little pig had met a builder Please, may I buy some of your bricks to build my house, he asked. Of course, replied the builder. A fine, strong house of bricks will last forever. The third little pig took the builder's advice. He would build the strongest house in the land. Finally, after a hard day's work, the house was finished. It had four strong walls of brick, a tiled roof, a sturdy wooden door, and a large fireplace with a chimney. Did you catch what the third little pig did differently than the other two? He took, well, he used bricks, good. Was that Harper Heiler? You were listening, all right. They used bricks. They took the builder's advice and after a hard day's work, built a house with four strong walls. And when the big bad wolf came calling, the story says the brick house stood firm. My question for you this morning is, which of these three little pigs do you resemble? What are you building your life on? In the book of Matthew, Jesus tells a similar story that reveals this same truth, that what you build your life on, around, and with matters. In Matthew 7, verse 24, he says, these are the words of Jesus, therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. This passage in Matthew is a portion of a much larger sermon that we call the Sermon on the Mount. This sermon is one of Jesus' most famous teachings and is often referred to as the declaration of the kingdom. 
He's declaring truths about living life. They're not religious rules to follow, but words to live by. In this teaching, the difference between the wise and foolish builder is determined by who hears the words and puts them into practice. That person is the one who has built on the foundation of the rock, just like that third little pig. We hear who heard the advice of the builder and followed it. He was a wise builder. If we want to live a life that stands up against the storms of, uh, of the world, we need to build our life on the foundation of rock, which is Jesus Christ. He is the firm foundation. Years before Jesus was born, and even more years before he was crucified and resurrected, Isaiah prophesied of a rock that we could build our life on in verse 28, 16. It says, so this is what the sovereign Lord says. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic. Later in the New Testament, Ephesians 2.20 says, build on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. Jesus is the rock that we should build our life on. And to make him the foundation of our life, in his teaching, in his words, says that we hear his words and put them into practice. This book, the Bible, is both practical and spiritual. And it provides lessons for both of building our life on Christ. It contains lessons on money management, parenting, marriage, conflict resolution, healthy relationships, health and fitness, business management, social justice, racial equality, caring for the poor, giving to the needy, and more. That's just the list I could come up with. But we can't just read or hear these words we have to put them into practice if we want to build a life that holds up under the oppression and the pressure of this world. And when we build on that foundation, Isaiah says we will never be stricken with panic. If you want to have hope and peace and joy in this world that is broken and fractured, it will only come from building your life on the rock, which is Jesus. Today we celebrate Easter Sunday because it is this day that Jesus has proven to the world that he is the solid foundation. In Mark 16, Verse 1, we read, When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. Listen up. As they entered the tomb, super important in this story, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. 
Go and tell the disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Church, there is no better, stronger, lasting foundation to build your life on than Jesus Christ. Because the stone was rolled away, we can enter into the tomb made of brick or stone and see that it's empty. Because the tomb is empty, we can believe that Jesus, the Son of God, has risen. Because the tomb is empty, we can be restored to relationship with the God who lives us. Because the tomb is empty, we can trust that our sins can be forgiven. Because the tomb is empty, we can become a new creation. Because the tomb is em- of stone is empty, we can put our faith in Jesus as the solid foundation in which to live our lives. And because the tomb is empty, we can walk through this world in confidence, knowing that no matter what big bad wolf comes knocking at our door, threatening to blow our house down, we can be assured that our life is built on the one who has overcome the world. And that's good news. Twenty-four years ago last month, at the age of 22, I took a bold step to build my life on Jesus. I didn't have it figured all out, and I still don't. And it hasn't been smooth sailing. But choosing to build my life on Jesus has been the best decision that I've made. I wouldn't be here today without making that decision. And not only did that decision change the trajectory of my life, but it has redirected and reshaped the life of my entire family. Maybe you're here this morning and you can echo that. You have built your life on Jesus as your foundation. Let me challenge you with this question. The third little pig opened up the door of his brick house as a safe haven for his two brothers running for cover. If you have built your life on Jesus, let me challenge you here. Is your house of brick open to others who haven't built their life on Jesus yet? Are you sharing that foundation? Are you being a place of safety for those that are running from cover for this world and looking for something that's standing firm? Or maybe you're here this morning and and you don't have that confidence or that assurance that you have built your life on a solid foundation. I'm here to tell you that you can. You can do that right here, right now, from your seat. The stone was rolled away and the tomb left empty for you as evidence that Jesus was the savior of mankind. Later on in the book of Acts, we read in chapter four, verse 10, then you know this, you and all the people of Israel, It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone the builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. 
This morning, if you're sitting in your seat and you're lacking the confidence of knowing that your life is built on something that is solid, that won't collapse when the next big storm hits in your life, I invite you to build your life on the cornerstone, on the rock, which is Jesus Christ. He's the one you can trust. He's the one that's given a roadmap to live this life. And he's made it available for you to come to him and begin building your life. Whether you're living in a house of straw or sticks right now, you can start rebuilding on a life, a life of stone or foundation of stone. And here at the vineyard, we say a prayer. It's called, sorry, thank you, please. And it goes something like this. I'm so sorry, God, for the, the sins of my life, the, the, the things that I've built my life around, with, and on that are not of you. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for me for those sins and then raising him to life that I would have a solid foundation to build on. Please forgive me. Please come into my life and save me. And when we pray that prayer, <laughs> the Jesus that left the tomb enters into our heart, enters into our life. And if you're like me, it doesn't mean that you get it all figured out right away. It doesn't mean that you have all the answers. It doesn't mean that life is sunshine and rainbows and unicorns and glitter. It means we have a foundation that is firm, and when the world comes against us, we don't have to panic. I'm going to go ahead and invite the worship team to come on up. And I think we're going to go right into our ministry time. If you're visiting with us each, each Sunday, we leave time for the Holy Spirit to just move in our lives, to speak to our hearts. Uh, it's a time where you can receive prayer. You can go pray for others. So I'll have the a ministry team members, if you could step out um, along the sides, front and back, probably. And at any point over the next couple songs, if you feel you need to receive prayer, if you feel like you just need to go pray with someone maybe in the room, I'm going to invite you to do that. And we'll stand and we'll sing and we'll worship. But as you do so, I, I ask you to reflect on that first initial question. What foundation are you building your life on? Is it straw? Is it sticks? Is it the rock? Let's pray. Holy Spirit, I invite you to come. I invite you to move in this place. Thank you, Jesus, <laughs> that you left that tomb. That you've proven to be who you said you were and that we can be assured and confident that building our life on you as a foundation will remain standing in all the ups and downs, the storms and floods and tornadoes and hurricanes and earthquakes that invade our life. Come speak to our hearts. <laughs>